I went back to school in 2019 on sabbatical and I went and did a master's in constitutional law. And the reason why I did that is really simple. I realized that I was going to be an idiot if I didn't. And the reason, I, the way I was going to be an idiot was as follows. Question facing the Supreme Court. Can the federal government implement a carbon tax? The logical thing to do is open the Constitution. And in the beginning of the Constitution, section, well, not beginning of the Constitution, section 91, you look and you read and you say, wow, it says right here, the federal government can raise money by any system or mode of taxation. That's what a carbon tax does. Done. The federal government can clearly do it. But if you miss the fact that that's not how our courts have defined taxes over time, you've just made an idiot of yourself. And I was very scared that I was going to do that. Um, the IAA ruling is uh, versus the, the clean electricity and um, oil and gas cap has some of that same property. It's easy to look and say what the court said here was that the federal government can't do things that affect oil production, they can't do things that affect electricity, et cetera. But what the court said was subtly different. It said you can't presume to have the right to say yay or nay on a project. On a, prevent, on a work and undertaking. You don't have that jurisdiction necessarily. Um, but you read between the lines, there's still a lot of federal jurisdiction there. Now on the oil and gas cap and the clean electricity reg, what the federal government will argue, they'll argue that under the federal criminal law power. And the federal criminal law power, the court's gonna see that, and they right now they ask three questions. Is there a prohibition? Is there a penalty? And is that prohibition in service of a public good or a public purpose. We know that the environment has been upheld multiple times as a legitimate public purpose for criminal law. We know there's a prohibition, there's lots of them, and we know there will be penalties. So the court will has traditionally looked at something like that and said, that's within the realm of criminal law. And so the challenge that the court will face on those is, number one, to say, is this a bridge too far? Is this more than just a prohibition? Is this economic regulation? They might say that and then they might overrule it. They might say, we need a new, and I've got a new paper coming on this eventually, we need a fourth P. We need to look at the impact on provincial jurisdiction of criminal law initiatives. But that's a really, it's easy to do when you say, oh, well, they're stamping on provincial jurisdiction with this, we should have a test for that. But think of all the other things that are affected by criminal law. Operating your vehicle, drinking and driving laws. That's all criminal law power, and it all impacts things like property and civil rights in the provinces.